It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for Ten. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for Ten. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Two outstanding elementary schools here playing our game today virtually. I'm here in the studio at Bonnie John's. They are safe in their homes, and we are going to have what is very similar to the Science Bowl as you've always known and loved. Yes, we have the same categories over there, but things are changed just a little bit. We're going to start our teams out as we always do with 50 points, no penalties for incorrect answers. And uh, talking about those categories, if you're new to our game, here are the six categories where our questions come from. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. In today's game and in all of the games we're taping this year in this pandemic infused kind of science bowl, we have 18 questions for our students three from each of our six categories, and they go in increasing levels of difficulty from five to 15 to 25 points. And now it is time to meet our first team, and they hail from Pointer Ridge Elementary School. Would you please say hello to our captain, Alan? Alan, would you wave to everybody at home? Alan is a fifth grader. We also have Sacred out there. Hey, Sacred, she's a fifth grader. She's waving to everybody, too. And we also have Shalom. Last but not least, another fifth grader. We're so happy to have them all here. Pointer Ridge has been part of our show for many, many years, and Miss Reedy, Melissa Reedy, is their wonderful coach. And despite the handicap of not being together in the school, they've been practicing and getting ready for today. All right, here we go, guys. Let's start with your first questions. These are from the green, these questions come from the green things category. Here's green things for five points. Listen carefully. A comic strip character mistakenly told his grandson that apples come from oak trees. <laughs> we know, of course, that apples come from apple trees, while oak trees produce these. Do we have a second to talk about it, please? Sure. Um, so, Shalom, Dave, what do you guys think? I think it's acorn. <coughs> acorn. Okay. Acorns is right. I heard sacred say it as well. You get acorns from oak trees. You got yourself five points. That's the way to start. Here's the 15-point question in green things. One of the healthiest foods is the crunchy wheat germ, a part of the wheat seed that, as its name suggests, lets the seed do this. We have a second to talk about it, please. Yep. What do you guys think? The clue was in the name. The clue was in the name. Wheat germ, the part of the seed that lets it germinate, germinate to begin to start to grow. Try this last one for 25 points in green things. Let's get this one. While trees harvested for lumber grow in forests, Fruit is harvested from trees that grow in these O-initialed spaces. If you want to pick apples, if you want to pick oranges, you go to what apple what or what orange what begins with the letter O. What do you guys think? Okay, we have a Have you ever heard of an orchard, an orchard, an apple orchard, or an, uh, an orange orchard? All right, let's go to the zoo parade questions. Here's your zoo parade for five points. It's because these mammals have plenty of blood vessels in their nose 
that the legend probably started that if they're pulling a sleigh and getting all overheated, getting hyperthermia, maybe, just maybe, their noses will glow like Rudolph's did. Name the mammal. Oh, guys, I think it's a reindeer. Reindeer. Yeah, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That's it. Let's try the 15-point question. Good answer, guys. The only bird with nostrils at the end of its beak, and it's got a long beak, is this tiny flightless bird that hunts for worms, smells them with those nostrils. It is the national symbol of the country of New Zealand. Name this K-initialed flightless bird. I know what this is. Go ahead, it's Secret. It's a kiwi. It is a kiwi. Boy, you are a great part of this team here. Thank you very much, Sacred. All right, let's move on to the 25-point question. You know, at Thanksgiving, there's something called a wishbone. And you grab it, someone else grabs it, and you yank it, and you try to get the bigger half because then your wish is supposed to come true. The wishbone in a turkey is formed when two of these C initial bones are fused together. These C initial bones are sometimes known as collar bones. Your collar bone, too, is known by this other C initialed name. So, what do you guys think? Think about bones a bone that begins with the letter C also known as your collarbone, kind of right up here. Your shoulders, shoulders. You got gotta, begin, gotta begin with the letter C, it's called a clavicle. It's called the clavicle. And it's very thin and it is easily broken. I know, I broke mine, falling off a bike one day. Let's go to the body systems questions. Here you go for five points. Throwing up, oh, it's a miserable feeling. Throwing up is your body's violent reversal of something called peristalsis. The wave-like wave movement of food down what food tube? Name your body's food tube. I know what it is. Go ahead. Uh, esophagus? You got it. It's it is esophagus. Baker, yeah. you, you are the team player here. You're, doing, you're getting those points and you're racking them up for 15 points in body systems. It's been discovered that vegetarians have a much greater chance of breaking their bones, like their hip, since they don't get enough protein and they don't get enough of this nutrient critical for strong bones. It has the chemical symbol capital C, small a. Can you name that important nutrient that you need to have strong bones? Capital C, small a, is its chemical symbol. Do we have a second to talk about it, please? Sure. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, calories. <laughs> I, I think so. No. No. Well, I know that for our bones to get strong, we need milk. But... Say it again, what you said, Alan. I know for our bones to get strong, we need milk. And what's in milk? What does that CA stand for? What is it that's in milk that is one of the main reasons you drink milk? Um, I know that milk makes its own sugar, but... Uh, calories was an interesting guess. Correct answer is calcium. Calcium is what you need for strong bones. Oh, see, now he knows. Yeah, you're going to do better here. Your body system question for 25 points. The outer layer of a body organ, like your adrenal gland, has the same C initialed name as the outer layer of your brain's cerebrum. This part of your brain, the outside, where a lot of your thinking takes place. It has what C initialed name? Um, what do you guys think? I want to say um, calcium, but I don't think it's that. Um, it's not calcium. Calcium was the answer to that last question. This is called the cortex, the cortex, the cerebral cortex. You might have seen that on diagrams of, of the brain, 
All right, that means we come to the end of the first half of your questions, your first nine, and your score right now, Pointer Ridge, is 80 points. Congratulations. It's now time to meet the team from Whitehall Elementary School, and let's say hello to them right now. Let's meet the captain first. Brad, Brad, could you wave to everybody? Brad, welcome to the program, and he is joined by, he's joined by Jake. Jake, would you wave to us? Thank you. Hey, Jake. And how about Hayden? Hayden? with that wonderful Christmas tree in the background there. And, all right, guys, again, we have 18 questions for you. The first nine will be from Green Things, Body Systems, and Zoo Parade. We begin. Here is the Green Things category, your five-point question. We begin. When last year's White House turkeys, pardoned by the president, were there, they were named peas and carrots. This year's pair of turkeys was named corn and this plant part that corn grows on. Do you guys think it's a stalk? Yeah. Yes. That kind of stalk. Oh, stalk. Actually, it was cob. It was corn and cob. Corn and cob. Good try. Try the 15-point question. It's a visual question. We're going to show you a picture for green things for 15 points. You know, you don't think of caterpillars as being wrestlers but they sometimes head bump each other if they're trying to get at the leaves of this, their favorite plant, the plant that gives them the toxin that makes them nasty to taste when birds try to eat them. Name this plant that is the favorite of the monarch butterfly. So what do you think, think guys? Mildew? I think it's mildew. So you think it's mildew? So what do you think, Hayden? Mm. I don't really know oh boy, you were so close with mildew. It is milkweed, milkweed. You heard that? To, I could see where you came up with that. Good try. Let's get this next one. Let's get this 25 pointer in green things. You know, if you're a gardener, if you plant things, you know, you, you hope, you hope that those seedlings come up and they don't damp off. Damp off is when they just kind of shrivel up and you think, oh, what did I do wrong? You can prevent that if you add fungicide to the soil that will remove the parasites. What S initialed word is used to make, what S initial term is used to describe that taking away of the parasites, it's the same term that's used to make sure baby bottles are perfectly clean. S initialed. Do you guys think it's sanitation? Yeah. Please yeah. clean it. Oh, like something like sanitize or? We're going to accept that. Sanitize or sterilize. Good. You got yourself 25 points. Good group think there, guys. Let's go to the zoo. Zoo prayed for five points as a multiple choice. While monogamy is often found among birds, monogamy is M-O-N-O-G-A-M-Y. While monogamy is often found among birds, it is rare for mammals who usually have multiple sources of food, multiple mates, or multiple places to live. Monogamy found among birds, rare among mammals. Mammals, they're not monogamous because they have what? Multiple sources of food, multiple mates, or multiple places to live. Yes, I agree with you. All right. Yeah, I agree with you too. Okay, and the consensus answer is? Um, the first one. The first one, multiple uh, mates or multiple sources of food. You say multiple sources of food, correct? Yeah, actually it was one in the middle. Oftentimes they have more than one mate. Birds though, like geese and swans, they will mate for life. Try this 15 point question. It is a visual. Let's bring up a visual question for zoo for 15. You know, this, oh, you know, it looks like you want to pet it. It's a very cuddly animal. It's called the slow loris, L-O-R-I-S. But don't be fooled. It's nasty, really nasty. It's one of the only mammals to produce this deadly chemical, often associated with snakes like cobras. Maybe venom? venom. It is venom. You got it. 15 points. Perfect. Nice work. 25 points in the zoo. It's now thought that turkey was not the main course at the first Thanksgiving. Who thought? Rather, the meal was a pescatarian delight, 
since it was mostly these that were served, creatures that are studied by scientists known as ichthyologists. What did they serve at that first Thanksgiving instead of turkey? What was the pescatarian delight? I think it's fish. It is fish. That's the way to do it. <laughs> All of you guys did such a great job there in that category. You got 25 points by coming up with fish. Let's go to the body. Body system. Three more questions for you. Keep the momentum going. You know, if you're feeling squeezed in with not enough space at the dinner table, you're sitting there like this, you're in a movie theater and you can't breathe, you might say, hey, give me some blank room named for these joints that link your humerus and radius and ulna bones. Maybe elbow. It's elbow. elbow. Give me some elbow room. You got it for 15 points. It's often said that the sleepiness you feel after eating turkey at Thanksgiving, you know, you just want to lay back and veg. It's caused by tryptophan. Tryptophan is one of these kinds of acids that are the building blocks of proteins. What do you think? Yes, I agree with that. Say it again. Amino acid? It is amino acid. Absolutely right, Hayden. Good answer. All right, we have a 25-point question for you in body systems to finish out your first round. You know, a kitchen fire that can happen if you're distracted while you're cooking can lead to serious third-degree burns, which can often leave victims with this kind of tissue in their wake. Also, the name of the villainous lion in the Lion King. Scar. Scar. It is Scar for 25 points. That's the way to do it. That means what a great round you had. You end up with 160 points. Well done, guys. All right, it is now time to bring back the team from Pointer Ridge and find out a little bit our, about our players here. We introduced them at the very top. Alan, tell us a little bit about Alan. What do you want to do someday, young man? Um, well, what I want to do when I grow up is I want to be an engineer. Wow. Just like uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. You got them all going there together. What do you do in your spare time? Well, in my spare time, when I don't have to when I finish all my homework, well, for I, like, I study a lot because to reach my goal, I have to study. So I study a lot, and when I'm done, I sleep. <laughs> sleep, do not underestimate. We need sleep. We need to kind of replenish our bodies overnight. And studying, it is evident that you do that. And I know you're going to be a fine engineer someday. Thank you for being here today. Let's talk to uh, your teammates there. Let's go to Shalom. And Shalom, uh, tell us about yourself. Do you have any uh, professional goals? What do you see yourself yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I want to be in the Army, if that's a workout, I want to be a professional basketball player. Professional basketball player, right. Do you have a profession, do you have a team that is your favorite right now? The Los Angeles Lakers. Los Angeles Lakers, yeah. Uh, good luck on the, uh, on the court. Uh, you're obviously a good athlete, good student as well. And let's talk to, uh, let's see, who else is with us here? Uh, Sacred. Sacred. Sacred, you came up with so many great answers there in the first. How do you know so much about science? Because you do. I focus in school. Mm -hmm. And... And I like the fact that, you know, uh, when you knew the answers in that first half, you just jumped right in. You know, you're, you're well-read, and you've obviously picked up a lot, and I can see why they put you on the team here. All right, guys, here you go. Nine more questions. If you're ready, let's go to Let's Get Physical for five points. Here's your question. Why, while isotherms are lines on a weather map showing places with the same temperature, isobars are lines that link places with the same what? Think about weather. You see a map. Lines, isotherms, therm is the clue there, same temperature. Iso means the same. Isobars connect places with the same what? What do weather people always talk about? Uh, Go ahead, Shalom. Atmospheric. Say it again. Atmospheric. Atmos atmospheric what? 
You're almost there. Atmospheric what? Come on, Alan. Come on. Say, pressure. Pressure. Say it again. Pressure. Pressure. You got it, young man. Perfect. Pressure. Atmospheric pressure. That's the way to start the round. You got yourself five points. For 15 points, the Statue of Liberty that stands in the harbor in New York with her torch welcoming immigrants, it's all green. But when it was delivered from France, it wasn't green. It was a nice shiny brown because it was made of this metal with the chemical symbol CU. Same as a shiny penny. So what do you guys think? Uh, I don't know. Uh, shiny penny is made of what same metal as the Statue of Liberty? Copper. Copper is right. Good. Let's go to, let's get them all in the let's get, here's 25 points. When newspaper articles refer to the changes brought about in our lives by the pandemic, they often use the word seismic, S-E-I-S-M-I-C, -S seismic, which means the changes are like these natural catastrophes. What are they? Seismic refers to what kind of natural catastrophes? We have a, talk, a second to talk about it, please. Sure. What do you guys think? Um, I think it's earthquakes. It is earthquakes. Yeah, you come out and swing it again, sacred. 25 points. You, you know your stuff. Good. Let's go to potpourri. First question for five points is a visual question. I've got a picture for you. The world's most legendary entomologists, people who study insects, have collected 1.25 million insects. One million of those are these W-initialed insects, of which the bowl variety, B-O-L-L, -L, that eats cotton balls, is the most famous. Some of you might have heard of a bowl what that begins with the letter W. Oh, what do you guys think? I don't know. That was a tough one. You know, one silver time, fish. go ahead. Silverfish? That's silverfish, no, silverfish, that's certainly a pest. Let's begin with a W. It's called a bowl weevil, weevil, W-E-E-V-I-L. And Alan goes, yes, I knew it, I knew it. All right, let's get this next one. I like this next question. For the 15 points in potpourri, when Joseph Biden gets to the White House, he's gonna be bringing two German shepherds going to be dogs back in the White House. But other presidents have had some very unusual pets. President Herbert Hoover, for instance, had one of these, North America's only marsupial, and he called him Billy. Billy was what kind of animal that Herbert Hoover had as his pet, North America's only marsupial. Um, what do you guys think? Um, I think it's a bird. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know. Um, well, whenever I think of Billy, I think of a goat. <laughs> That's a, a reasonable subject, Billy goat. Marsupial was your clue there. Marsupials, if you remember, are pouched animals like kangaroos. And the only pouched animal that lives here in North America, you probably have seen them under your porch, nasty little things with long tails and kind of fur that looks like it needs to be washed, called a possum, a possum. Here's your 25 point question in potpourri, multiple choice. You know, a lot of us are getting tested for COVID. There are different kinds of tests. The one that is the best test, the gold standard is called PCR, PCR test. The P stands for polymerase. You don't know that. C stands for chain. The R stands for which of these? Reaction, receptor, or recipient. The PCR test, polymerase chain, reaction, receptor, or recipient. Oh, what do you guys think? Um, um, so I think it's reaction, but... It is reaction. That's the way, Captain. Got yourself 25 points. 
Let's go to Dateline. Here are your last three questions coming up. Let's get them. All right, the answer to this first question is a famous woman. The initial money for the research that led to the Moderna COVID vaccine was the $1 million contributed by this country singer, cultural phenomenon. She sang nine to five and has a theme park named for her in Nashville. What's the guy's theme? Well, there's a lot. The famous woman singer recently had a Christmas special. Her name is Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. For 15 points, I have a picture for you. Look at the screen. If the license plate on your car in Maryland um, is one of the newer ones, it will have a crab on it, a Maryland crab, a blue crab, a crustacean. But Delaware, the state next to us, has new license plates. And if you look to the far right, you'll see another kind of crab that is not a crustacean. Actually, it's more related to arachnids, spiders. Name that crab. Is it a horseshoe crab? It is indeed. That's the way to do it. Great answer. Great answer. All right. So Shalom comes through for us. Now let's go to the last question for you in Dateline. Last question in the game. You're doing well this round. Gregor Mendel's experiments with pea plants. He was a monk. He showed that characteristics that appear frequently like red petal color on those plants are controlled by genes that are dominant. While others that occur less frequently like white petal color are controlled by genes that he described by this R initial term, the opposite of dominant. Genes can be dominant if they cause traits that appear frequently and they're known by this R initial term if they produce traits that are relatively rare. Give me an R initial word. Sacred, I'm counting on you. You always pull the rabbit out of the hat. What's the R initial word stand for? Shalom, you, you, you know these answers too. Alan, I don't want you to go, oh, when you hear it. Uh, can you please repeat the question? Uh, the man who did the experiment on pea plants when he was studying genetics, he found that if the pea plants had red petals, it was due to a gene that was dominant. And if the pea plants had white petals, that was due to genes that are the opposite of dominant, this R initial term. Uh, what did, um, recessive? Say it again, please. Recessive? You got it. You got it. Sacred came through. Yes, indeed. Shalom says, yes, we did it. Good work. That means with that answer recessive, you end this game with 190 points. Pointer Ridge, congratulations. You showed people at home how Science Bowl is done. You should feel proud of yourselves. Time now for the Whitehall team to answer their last nine questions. Before I ask them, let's find out about these fine young players here. Let's go to the captain of the team, and that would be Brad. Brad, tell me uh, uh, a little bit about your plans for the future. Have you thought about it yet? Um, yeah, when I grow up, I kind of want to be a software en engineer. Engineer. So you're obviously a great uh, math student as well as a good science student. And tell us how you're prepared to be on the Science Bowl. Um, how I prepare is that I watch a lot of videos and I also and I watch a lot of videos and I also go on the internet and I also look for other questions. And sometimes I use Kahoot so I could look for Kahoots about science science bowl. You've done all the right things, young man, and you're you're playing a terrific game here today. Let's find out about your teammates. Let's talk to Jake. Jake, nice to have you with us today. And Jake, you know an awful lot about science. You're jumping in with some of those. And even when you don't get the right answer, you are in the right ballpark there. Do you want to be a scientist someday? I would like to be an inventor when I grow up. I have tons of great ideas that I think will help humanity. That's what life is about, great ideas and acting on those ideas. And never assume that somebody else is going to do it. So if you've got it and... and uh, Keep your ideas sometimes to yourself. Don't share them too much because, you know, a lot of people will try to uh, infringe on that idea. Um, nice to have you here today. You're playing a terrific game. 
And let's find out about the other member of your team, Hayden. Hayden, did you put up that Christmas tree yourself? Uh, no, my dad put that up. Yeah, did you help at all? Mm, not really. Uh, let him do that. You could just sit there and appreciate it. You got a nice backdrop there. Uh, tell me why you wanted to do this. Why'd you want to be on this show, Hayden? Um, I just think it's fun you know, learning all this stuff about science and practicing. That's great. Yeah, we hope you are having fun here today. And you're letting us know what you know, and hopefully you're learning something through the questions that I ask. What do you want to do someday? Um, I just want to leave a positive impact on the world. Wow, that's, that's wonderful. We all want a legacy. So when we're gone, people would say, you made a difference. You're making a difference here today, young man. Keep up your good work. So I have nine more questions for you. Let's go to Let's Get Physical. And if you're ready, here we go. Let's get physical for five points. The astronauts who just flew aboard the Dragon space capsule to the International Space Station took along a baby Yoda, who, when it first floated away, was an indicator that they had broken free of what force? Gravity? Gravity, that's right. Gravity. So when they finally reached the point where gravity was reduced and little Yoda started floating away, they, all right, we are now beyond gravity's pull. Good answer, five points. For 15 points, when visiting your dentist during the pandemic, <coughs> you'll likely have to rinse your mouth for a minute with a solution that is half water, H2O, and half H2O2 which is better known as hydrogen what? Peroxide. Peroxide. Peroxide is right, indeed, hydrogen peroxide. It is a good way to uh, cleanse your mouth of a lot of uh, bacteria. 25 points and let's get physical. A seesaw and a pair of scissors, like all levers, L-E-V-E-R-S, operate with a pivot point known by this F initialed term. What do you guys think? Mm, it's a pivot. Um, guys, do you think it's, do you think it's fulcrum? Oh uh, yeah, fulcrum. fulcrum. Yeah. It is fulcrum. All right, our captain came through. Absolutely nicely done there, Brad. It is fulcrum. Potpourri for five points. In Los Angeles, you can see fossils of saber-toothed tigers and mastodons that were trapped long ago in what gooey substance known in Spanish as La Brea? Tar, I think it's... Tar is right, the La Brea tar pits. The place where, if you remember the old Flintstone cartoons, they always went to the tar pits. Potpourri for 15 points. Many of the cats living at Author Ernest Hemingway's former mansion in Florida are polydactylous, meaning they have many, too many, of these body parts. Do you guys think maybe like arms? What? Or maybe two missing legs? Well, legs? I mean, this is not quite, not quite. quite. Uh, fingers or toes. If you're polydactylous, you have six fingers or six toes. Close. Try the 25-point question in potpourri. DTAP, D-T-A-P, is a vaccine that prevents diphtheria, pertussis, and this T-initial disease, also known as lockjaw, that can result from a knife wound, gunshot wound, or stepping on a rusty nail. Guys, I'm pretty sure it's tetanus. It is tetanus. Perfect answer. Let's go to your last three questions in Dateline. On Route 197 in Laurel, Maryland, there is a sign pointing to a place where you can dig for dinosaur bones. Just like what kind of specialist scientist featured in Jurassic Park? Paleontologist. Paleontologist is correct, indeed. For 15 points. Here's a quote. Who said, my electric lamp consists essentially of an incandescing conductor of high resistance hermetically sealed in a glass vacuum chamber? He was an inventor. Guys, do you think it's Thomas Edison? 
It is Thomas Edison, and he was describing his incandescent light bulb. Indeed. Last question for you in the game for 25 points, two-part answer. There is a fear that any of the COVID vaccines now being given will be limited in how long they will protect us. But vaccines for what two diseases? One that put victims in iron lungs back in the 1950s, and the other that scarred people terribly have worked perfectly for many, many years. Can you name either of those two diseases? Polio. Vaccines for either one. Polio is correct. And do you know the other one? Mm. Polio was the one that put people in iron lungs and the one that scarred people terribly was smallpox, smallpox. But you got the one and you got the 25 points. That means Whitehall, you end the game with 280 points. Fantastic work. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's Science Bowl. We had six outstanding young people here today. It takes a lot of courage to do this. We learn from them. They are some of Prince George's finest, and uh, they are showing us that we're making it through. We're not just making it through the pandemic. We are excelling in this pandemic. Our final tally today is Pointer Ridge, 190 points, Whitehall, 280. Whitehall, congratulations to you. Congratulations also to Pointer Ridge. Let's give everybody a nice round of applause. Let's clap for ourselves and for everybody else. And we thank you for watching, and we ask you to tune in next time for another edition of the Science Bowl right here online. And uh, I promise you, you'll have another exciting game. Bye-bye, everybody. I'm Dave Zarin.